What is up, everybody? We have made it to college football week one. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. Today, we're going to be talking about picks, players to watch, storylines, everything you need for college football week one. After the intro, make sure you like and subscribe as the intro is playing, and we'll catch you on the other side. All right, we finally made it. We had a little taste of college football last week with a couple of games that were worth watching. I think it it was nice to see Notre Dame and USC playing. It was nice to kind of see what that USC defense looked like, even if it was a little disappointing. But we have made it. Week one, we have a full slate of college football games this week. And so I'm just going to highlight a few games, some players to watch, some things to, to look at as we get into week one. The picks. So I'm talking about four games here. The first one, Utah against Florida. Uh, This one is tonight. When you, if you're watching this video on Thursday, it's tonight. Um, And then West Virginia at Penn State. That one is Saturday evening. LSU at Florida State is a Sunday night game, which is pretty cool. I love Labor Day weekend football. And then the the last game that we're going to talk about is North Carolina against South Carolina. These are the four that are pretty intriguing. You know, week one has a ton of different games on the slate, but I don't really feel like sitting and talking about Ohio State versus Indiana because we know that outcome already, even if there are some players to maybe watch in that game. So let's get into these four games. First one, Florida against Utah. This one, like I said, tonight at 8 p.m. I believe this one's on ESPN if I'm, I'm correct, but I don't know actually what what channel they're on. But Utah is minus 198 heading into this recording, which is Wednesday night. Uh, Cam Rising has been declared out, although I don't know if that's officially official. It's not looking like he'll play. We kind of expected that would be the case with Utah. But the, the key point here, Utah does not lose at home. In the last three seasons, they are 21 and one, four seasons actually. Uh, so this has been one of those teams where if they're playing at home, you kind of can chalk it up to be a win. Now, the quarterback situation is a little bit iffy. I think they're going to lean on Jaquindon Jackson. I think that they're going to try to you know make sure that they win that trench battle. Now, Florida, on the other hand, should have a nice rushing attack. I actually like Graham Mertz a little bit more than I thought I would in, in revisiting his film. I think you can coach some of the, the bad stuff out of him. But I just don't see Florida going into Utah and, and stealing a win. If they weren't able to win last year with Anthony Richardson, um, actually, did they win that game? I don't even remember, but it doesn't matter because Utah is going to win this one at home. I, I feel pretty comfortable with this one, although I think the line has moved a little bit. So um, I, I think the Cam Rising news kind of shocked the sports book a little bit, though I you know I don't expect Cam Rising to play for another couple of weeks. So um, next game, West Virginia against Penn State. Like I said, Saturday uh, at 730. Penn State is heavy favorites in this game. Really, the only reason I wanted to talk about this game is it's Drew Aller's first home start. This is the, the debut of what I think is going to be one of the best teams in the Big Ten. Obviously, they have that awesome rushing attack with Nicholas Singleton uh, spearheading it. But overall, this Penn State team looks like a, a legitimate contender. And I think we're going to, you know, this is a tone setting type of game. I think if they go out there and route West Virginia, I think I feel pretty confident, confident and comfortable with where I have them projected for this year. If they go out there and struggle, which, you know, I wouldn't put it past them, I guess, you know, just with the history of Penn State. But if they go out there and struggle, I think, you know, potentially I could be a little a little too bullish on them this year because I did, I believe, pick them to to beat Ohio State or something crazy like that. Uh, when we did our, our top 25 previews, go check those out if you haven't already. But overall, I, I mean, heavy, heavy favorites. If they lose this game, I'll, I'll be very, very shocked. I just can't wait to see what this offense looks like with a quarterback. I do shout out to Sean Clifford though, because Sean Clifford left Penn state and now he looks like a legitimate quarterback over there in green Bay. So that's fun for him. But I think the, the Penn state football program is better off with drew Aller at center under center Uh, LSU against Florida state. This is the big game of the week, right? This is the only top 10 matchup. Uh, These two teams both have college football playoff aspirations, and I think that they both have a case for that. This one is Sunday night, um, 7.30 p.m. This one is on ESPN. I do know that one. Florida State is actually not favored in this game. They are plus 120. Um, This is very much so a pick I believe the line is two and a half right now. It's 
a neutral field site. You know, they're in Orlando, which I, I would like to see the the progression of this hurricane and, and what that kind of means for this game. Um, but I, I hope they're able to get out there and play. The main thing, though, when I look at these two teams, I think that LSU is, has improved. I think losing Mason Smith, their defensive tackle for this game, is is actually pretty big. He's going to anchor down that that the middle of that defense. And I think LSU's spine looks a little bit worse off when he's not on the field. On the other side of things, Florida State has one of the most dynamic offenses in college football. I think Jordan Travis is going to have a big year. Trey Benson is up there as one of the best running backs in college football. And then you have the, the wide receiver tandem of Johnny Wilson and Keon Coleman, who's making his debut. He was a late transfer, but man, is he getting a ton of buzz right now. Every report out of camp is saying that he is looking like the thing that unlocks this offense a little bit more. I think this is going to be a shootout. LSU's corners aren't that good. Florida State's defense came around a little bit last year, but I definitely think that this is going to be, a, you know, not maybe not a 40 to 45 game or anything like that. But I think these two teams will be able to put up points. And, and I think whoever has the ball last probably wins this game. To me, that's Florida State, though. I think Florida State's in better position to win this game uh, in week one. Now, if they matched up eight weeks later, I think LSU probably gets them. But I like Florida State in this game. Last game we're going to talk about North Carolina against South Carolina. This is a big one uh, Saturday night as well. South Carolina is actually plus 110 in this game. So um, obviously the, the sports books are looking at Drake May and saying, well, if you have Drake May, you should be able to win. There are some things on the, the UNC uh, defensive side of the ball that make me think, if Spencer Rattler is even acceptable, an acceptable quarterback in this game, I think that South Carolina has a pretty good shot. Now, I will say, North Carolina, I support them. I They're one of my favorite teams, and I think Drake May is a fantastic football player. Uh, Devontae Walker, I don't know if he's going to be out on the field. Um, you know, He's battling eligibility right now after his transfer from Kent State. I'm curious to see what that looks like. Nate McCollum is going to make his debut in this game. Uh, I'm curious to see the the running back rotation for North Carolina, but I went back and watched some Spencer Rattler from last year, and, and you know, late season Spencer Rattler was pretty good. Uh, you know, I think that they have, have kind of found what works for Spencer Rattler. He was thrown with the anticipation and things like that. And this North Carolina secondary probably can't handle Juice Wells and and all the weapons that they have. Nicholas Harbor, I'm excited to see that kid get on the field. So. Uh, I just I have this weird feeling. I keep saying it, but I remember going into the the Sam Howell year it, it, right before his draft year. They played Virginia Tech, I believe, on a Friday night, and Virginia Tech came out and smacked them. And Sam Howell didn't look good. Now I don't expect that same thing to happen with Drake May, but I do kind of think that this is one of those games where you know North Carolina is the favorite. South Carolina kind of inks out the win players to watch this is the fun part right so we're we're a debbie channel we're a college football channel we talk about a lot of players we talk about dynasty there are a lot of players that you should keep your eyes on this weekend obviously caleb williams we got to see him last week watch him every week he's very fun to watch but this is also one where i wanted to highlight some of the other players that haven't been on the field just yet first one marvin harrison jr uh we do know what he is and and that is one of the better wide receiver prospects that we've ever seen we actually just talked about that on this episode of the football guys dynasty football show as well so go check that out uh as well but uh marvin harrison jr i think you know whatever the quarterback situation is which kyle mccord is getting the start devin brown will play whatever the quarterback situation is doesn't matter i think kyle mccord actually offers harrison a, a better opportunity to maybe go win a heisman because the, that Kyle McCord threw to him in high school. So they do already have that chemistry and things like that. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. Indiana is not really a, a good matchup to see all of that because I think all the starters will be sitting by halftime, but I'm excited to see him back on the football field. Uh, Texas. Uh, so Quinn Ewers, we're, we're going to know what Texas is pretty quickly, I think, this year because I think if Quinn Ewers goes out there and he looks – you know, he, it, close to as bad as he was down the stretch last year, uh, I think that we can say, okay, Texas probably isn't back. This is a game against Rice. Quinn Ewers should have 400 yards passing in the first half. Um, it's a matchup against JT Daniels. This is 
fun fact I saw to, today, yesterday, uh, JT Daniels has played at Texas three times with three different programs, which is an insane stat to me. Uh, that kid's been in, in college for a very long time. But Quinn Ewers, to me, he has his assortment of weapons. He lost by John Robinson. I understand what that you know kind of implies. But overall, this should be a better Texas football team. And I think that we're going to see exactly what they are based on his play this weekend. JJ McCarthy uh, from Michigan. So I graded out JJ McCarthy. I'm, I'm trying to put summer grades on. Obviously, summer's a little bit over now. So uh, I'm still kind of just grading based on last year's film. JJ McCarthy wound up being my QB3. Kid is just loaded with tools. He does a lot of the right things. His mechanics are fantastic. Uh, I think, you know, Dane Brugler made him his QB3. And I think that that kind of shocked a lot of people. But when you go back and you revisit the film, you can absolutely see it. I think he's right there kind of right behind Drake May uh, in, in terms of what he might be able to become. Uh, and I think that we will see a little bit of that this year, obviously, or this week, but obviously East Carolina is not a really formidable opponent. So, uh, you know, we might not see JJ for very long. That's the thing with week one is we, we see these guys, but we don't get to see them for the entire game most of the time. Uh, one player I know we won't see for the entire game is Jalen Milrow. And the reason we won't see him is because he's kind of still in a quarterback battle and they play middle Tennessee Alabama does and they're 39 and a half point favorites Jalen Milrow is the first up though and so that insinuates that Jalen Milrow is currently the QB one and the other guys would have to come in and take that job from him Alabama is going to be more run heavy this year if I had to guess they've got an assortment of of four running backs that I think could really you know put it to any team let alone a, a middle Tennessee team I'm excited to see what they do with some RPO action. I'm excited to see Jalen Milrow's growth from the time that we saw him on the field last year. I think that this is a kid that could be one of those risers if he's taken those steps forward as a passer. I'm excited to see it. I think Middle Tennessee is a good opponent to kind of get started with that. Riley Leonard. I, I did want to mention Riley Leonard on this. Riley Leonard entered. Uh, I entered summer with Riley Leonard inside my top five quarterbacks i believe uh, heading into this year toolsy kid a lot of athleticism you know dual threat ability he ran for a ton of yards last year he gets a really tough matchup against clemson in week one so i think we're really going to see what he is now a lot of duke's offense is that you know half field stuff kind of fake college stuff similar to hennon hooker last year i kind of want to see what they do with that offense and if they kind of you know, say, oh, he can make pro reads and he can go through progressions a little bit more. I'm excited to see him play. I, I think this is going to be one of those risers in, in the NFL draft community here soon. Um, it's kind of already starting. I've seen him in, in a few first round mocks, but I'm excited to see him play against a very, very tough Clemson defense, which actually they lost a lot of players. I think they're probably better this year, uh, assuming that everyone stays healthy. So that's a player I want to watch. And then I snuck in Chandler Morris onto this graphic. And the reason I snuck him in, there's just a lot of buzz, a lot of rumblings about Chandler Morris being better than Max Duggan. I've heard it since before last year. Chandler Morris won the job over Max Duggan last year. Now, it's not saying, I mean, you know, Max Duggan just got waived this week by the Chargers, but, you know, he was a Heisman candidate last year. And so when you consider that, I know Garrett Riley has, has jumped ship. He's at Clemson now, ironically, but. I think that this offense is still going to be really good. They still have a lot of pass catchers. They still have a lot of juice and, and speed in that offense. Chandler Morris is a better dual threat quarterback than even Max Duggan was. I'm excited to see what this looks like because this, if Chandler Morris comes out and he just, you know, goes crazy against Colorado, which this is a nationally televised game. I think we're going to start talking about Chandler Morris in, in a different light as well. If Max Duggan was able to be a Heisman candidate and Chandler Morris is better than him, I don't know. You do the math, I guess. I, he, he could be a, a Heisman candidate. So uh, I'm not saying I'm predicting that, but I'm excited to see what it, it looks like against a Colorado defense that, I, you know, I don't think Colorado is going to be very good. I guess this is going to be the the test, right? They're going against uh, college football playoff, uh, you know, runner-ups, uh, national championship runner-ups, which is crazy to say about a TCU, TCU program. But those are the players to watch. Those are the the storylines to watch. I mean, there are a lot of different things. My favorite storyline this week is who gets to keep uh, Miami and not add the the suffix of the state. Uh, Miami, Ohio plays Miami, Florida. I think if Miami, Ohio wins that, it's they're never going to be called Miami, Ohio 
ever again. They are the Miami, and Miami, Florida has to keep that FL on there. Um, Miami is 17 point favorites. I don't, Miami, Florida is 17 point favorites, so I don't expect that, but uh, I'm excited to see that one. I'm excited to see this Tennessee offense. Tennessee's, you know, 28 point favorites against Virginia, how the, the, the mighty have fallen in, in Virginia, but. Uh, this Tennessee offense, Dante Thornton has transferred in. I think there are a lot of fun things to watch this weekend, even if the matchups aren't going to be exactly the best. Um, a, a sneaky good matchup that I probably could have talked about in the picks, Fresno State against Purdue. Uh, Purdue has Hudson Card at quarterback now. Fresno State has been just a great program. Um, shout out to Kevin uh, for, for me mentioning Fresno. But overall, this is a fun weekend of college football. I hope you are tuned in. I hope you're excited for it. If you've watched it this long into this video, then I assume you are. Um, if you are interested in college football, we do have a Patreon. We have Debbie rankings. We have, we do a lot of college football stuff. There's a lot going on in the Patreon. So go check that out. The link is here in the description. Otherwise we will see you later this week for another video. And, uh, thank you guys. Make sure you like, and subscribe, drop a comment. Let me know what game you're watching, what players you want to watch, etc. things like that. Have a good day guys.